sorry. Sorry for that abrasive video title. Ugh. I didn't mean to just come out and say it like that, but you know, here here we are. I, I do know for some folks that the revelation that Moses didn't write the Pentateuch, it might be a bit of a bombshell, but it's well accepted within biblical scholarship. And it's actually based on a really close reading of the Bible. We're gonna come back to this truism again and again in this class, but let me introduce it to you now. Reading the Bible, it can be risky business because when you read it closely, some really interesting and oftentimes really difficult problems tend to arise. Many of us, I imagine, we grew up with the idea of mosaic authorship of the Pentateuch, those first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis through Deuteronomy. And as a result, I think many of us approach this portion of the Bible as a unified whole which has the unintended interpretive consequences of believing that there's no contradictions or tensions or discrepancies within this section of the Bible. One guy, Moses, wrote it and then it just flows. But when you start to read the Pentateuch closely, as, as people have been doing for centuries, this thesis, it falls apart rather quickly. Let, let's start with the obvious and admittedly the kind of silly. Skip past Genesis to when Moses is actually introduced in the story. It would be weird for him to write about himself in the third person. Moses did this, Moses did that, Moses said this, Moses said that. It would also be weird for him to describe himself as, quote, a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth, as it says in Numbers, 12.3. I mean, it would be hilarious if he decided to write that, but also a little weird and, and highly ironic. It would also be weird, and now moving away from the funny into the, the pretty dark, for Moses to write his own death account at the end of Deuteronomy. Now, I absolutely do not believe that inspiration means that the biblical authors were just taking dictation from the Holy Spirit, as if the Spirit is whispering to them what they need to write down on the page. But I do like to pretend here what would happen if that was actually the case, right? So the Holy Spirit is whispering to Moses, all right, you've been doing great. I want you to keep going and I want you to write this. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab. Like it just gets, it gets funny. Now these textual realities, as silly as they might be, whether it's Moses talking about himself in the third person or saying how humble he is or having to write his, his death account, uh, they, they did at least begin the conversation amongst ancient interpreters to wonder if Moses really wrote all of the Pentateuch. But there's other stuff in there as well, much more substantial stuff, I would say, that ultimately led scholars to reject Mosaic authorship of the Pentateuch. I, I won't dwell on this one, but the Hebrew, it presents issues. First, most of the Hebrew that we have in the Old Testament would not have been available to Moses during his time, which is a problem. Second, and this is one's related, the Hebrew in the Pentateuch is not uniform. It's not just one style of Hebrew throughout. It has various forms of the language. Now, maybe this will help so that you can wrap your brain around this. Have you ever read Old English? I, like, it's bizarre, and it can take you a while to figure out what in the world is going on because we don't talk like that, we don't spell like that, we don't have the same uh, turns of phrase that they might use in, in Old English. Now, contrast that with your teenager's text messages. If you are blessed to have teenagers or to know teenagers or be related to some teenagers and you've looked at some of their text messages or they've sent you one, it's, it's English, I guess, but it's, it's a totally foreign language. Now imagine reading a book that's written in Old English and your teenager's text language and it just keeps switching back and forth. You wouldn't have to be a perceptive reader of English to realize that these languages are wildly different and they seem to originate in different time periods. 
And something similar is happening for really good readers of Hebrew that see the sort of disparity in the text that, that we see in this made-up example of Old English and, and the text language. So within the Bible, you've got some old stuff like the Song of the Sea in Exodus 15. Some people think that's the oldest portion of the Old Testament. Uh, but then we also have some things in, say, Deuteronomy that reflect a completely different linguistic context. There's other examples of later additions in the Pentateuch, too, that don't depend on your understanding of Hebrew. One is the presence of editorial notes, like the one in Genesis 12, verse 6. It says, Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. And then we get this note, at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Now, for most of us, I assume this is a line that we would just probably read right past. It's, it's a helpful tidbit, maybe, but not really a big deal. But think about it here for a second. When would someone be writing and feel the need to specify the Canaanites were in the land when Abram was traveling? It only makes sense for someone to mention this if the Canaanites were no longer in the land, right? And when were the Canaanites no longer in the land according to the biblical narrative? Well after the time of Moses. So Moses probably didn't write this. Some people make similar arguments about all of the stuff in Genesis about camel herding, right? You've got Abraham with camels, you've got Isaac's uh, wife-to-be watering camels, those sorts of things. Um, according to the archaeological record, camels weren't domesticated until about the 10th century or so, which is well after the time of Moses, which scholars would place anywhere between the 15th and the 13th centuries. So, so these texts, they've got weird stuff that Moses probably didn't write about himself. They're in a form of Hebrew that Moses wouldn't have known, and they have some late editorial remarks that go well beyond the time of Moses. But there's more. This is starting to sound like one of those infomercials, right? There's more, and I'll talk about it right after this. Mm -hmm. 